Welcome Monroe Live fans. I'm Mike Oaks, uh, Monroe's VP for Business Development. And I'm here today at CES. You see CES in the background, the doors just open. We walked in right over to the booth here with EV Box and found Remco Samuels, right? Uh, that uh, wanted to share with us this US introduction of their level three charger. And I'm gonna defer to Remco to give you the background on that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yes, indeed. This is uh, our first uh, level three charger in, uh, in the market, in the US market. We expect to bring that uh, in the course of summer. Um, we already uh, sell them in Europe. Uh, so we are uh, originally from, uh, from the Netherlands, based in the Netherlands, Amsterdam. Uh, basically, this is our fourth generation of, uh, of DC chargers already. And the first one that we bring to the US market. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And you already have uh, a level two that you've been yeah. selling in the U.S. already. That's correct. Yeah, so, that's, uh, that's the icon. Think, yeah, uh, maybe we can building momentum. We are building right. momentum. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, this year is uh, momentum is there. Yeah. Uh, so we have the product now. It's built on a, on a platform technology. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, well, I'm not saying easy, but rather easy to bring right. that uh, to the U.S. market now. We have a local team that is uh, very solid. We have our own assembly site in, yeah. in Libertyville near Chicago. Um, and I think uh, everyone can agree that uh, momentum is there now. Also, if you look at uh, government yeah. uh, incentives, etc. Yeah, yeah. so, Incentivizing uh, to build local. Yeah, so we are really, like really uh, excited uh, to be here today at, uh, at the CES yeah. and to be able to showcase uh, this new product. And we wanted to introduce a couple of your teammates here to share a little bit of the technical details. So who's first? We wanted to hear about what's currently available in the U.S from EV box, the Ionic, Icon. 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 Yes. It's iconic. It's iconic. I like the play. I like <laughs> it. That's nice. All right, Seth, tell us a little bit more about it. Well, so is, is Icon, which is a level two AC charging station meant for destination charging, right? We're looking to, we're using this in commercial locations. Think about retailers, uh, hotels, uh, yeah. Shopping malls, that's the typical location where you would find these. Commercial parking lots as well. Um, and it's a charging station that we built with a built-in uh, covered cable management system. We have always fixed cables yeah. in the US. We have type 1 fixed cables. And these cables are all over, over the ground, mm -hmm. always break. Mm -hmm. Facility manager having to replace them every month doesn't work out. So right. we had to come up with a proper solution really to manage the cables of this station and to prevent vandalism. So I can't take the plug out, right? It's always stuck in yeah. unless I authorize and I'm an authorized user of this station. You can't get it out. You can't get it out. Now if I do authorize, I can, right? It unlocks the plug. I can put it in my car. Lots of meters of cable hiding inside. Yeah. It doesn't get dirty over, over time, right? And I can put the cable back and it will retract the cable back in. Yeah. Gives me now a blinking red because I didn't Charge. finish the transaction. Yeah. yeah. It didn't get connected to an EV. And then it cancels your payments because yeah, you're not paying if you're not charging. But this is really what, what we designed the icon for. For its cable management, very long reach, it doesn't matter how you park, you can always charge your car. I like the size of it, it's compact. And I like what you mentioned there, you were thinking about the, who's gonna buy this and have to maintain it, right? Exactly. They're not gonna wanna have to replace parts and and if it's not, they're uh, thinking of uptime and the people that are gonna own it, so. Yeah, yeah. Next I time like, you come across an AC charging station, you see the cable on the ground, then you, you, yeah. you're gonna see the value of this and why we build it like this, Yeah. right? Yeah. Wise, very wise. Yeah. Now we've got uh, Thetis to share with us the new introduction for this year, new introduced at CES. We're going to hear about it now. Thank you. So indeed, this is EVBox Tronic Modular, our uh, flagship product for DC charging, fast charging. 
It's up to 240 kilowatts. Uh, it's a quite powerful machine, I have to say, enabling customers for the US as well. And I would say the most important aspect of it is the architecture. So it has a modular architecture. Uh, as I said, it's 240 kilowatt, 140 kilowatt in total, but then it makes up or it's up uh, from three, 30 kilowatt power modules. Yeah. So it has up to eight power modules, 30 kilowatt. And what's the good thing about that is that you can easily maintain and install it. Yeah. And also, if one of the power modules for some reason breaks down, then the uptime of the charging station is still there and you can still serve your customers and it continues to you know, work properly, basically. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the installation and maintenance, it's very easy to remove one of the power modules and put that put that back in in a very safe way as well. Yeah. So I would say that helps also when it comes to upgrading or upscaling uh, the site and the charging stations as well. Yeah, I like I like your talking points. The the main modularity, maintainability, uptime, right? Because the people that are buying this, like, how much time am I? Uh, can I have revenue coming in? It's also so. about the amount of the components. Like this, this machine has fewer components. So in terms of costs and in terms of serviceability, it's easier to predict your costs longer term as well. Yeah. It has yeah. a very specific set of components. Yeah. All right. I like it. I, everything I've heard, <laughs> that those are the kinds of things we talk to our customers Indeed. about. So you're already doing it. Perfect. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. What was uh, to add maybe what was important to us as well is that we, we build a platform first. Uh, we, this is the first uh, version, let's say, that was built on that platform. So this has eight modules of 30 kilowatts. Yeah. Uh, but in Europe, we also have an, uh, an, easy ad uh, an early adopter program with uh, one of our uh, uh, key partners. Mm -hmm. And we are testing a 400 kilowatt mm. charger already. That was the first one in Europe. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly the same, um, the, the, the same machine, but it has 10 modules More, of yeah. 40. Yeah. Um, and it was built on the same platform. Uh, in Europe, we still have um, different regulation in different countries. Yeah. Uh, so for Germany, you need a specific uh, measuring uh, methodology. Yeah. Uh, in France, you have an AC socket as well in a DC station. But because of this platform approach, we yeah. could easily make all those for uh, right. Also for the UK, for instance, the maximum height is two meters. Ah. So we have the same, so we call it the Trotic Modular same. Compact. Yeah. Uh, and of course, for the US, uh, we have a UL uh, certified version. Um, yeah. Like I said, that's from the middle of this year. Um, yeah, and that is the beauty of the platform approach. This is our fourth generation of DC stations, but the first one that we really built on, uh, on this platform yeah. uh, and makes it much more, uh, well, easy for us to... Um, yeah, scale. Oh, to scale, yeah, and yeah. that's exactly uh, why we are so uh, enthusiastic. Yeah, you should be. Yeah. I love it. All right, if that's... Uh, uh, I think that's about all the time we want to take from these guys. It's just the start of the show. And uh, we're glad they took the time to, to share this with us. For all our listeners, please uh, uh, like us and, uh, and tell your friends. We'll see you. So, Leon, great to see you. Nice Thank to meet you, you so much for inviting us down to have a look at your charging systems and find out what's going on at ABB. Welcome to the home of charging of ABB. Huh? So, and welcome at the CES. Thank so, you. We are really excited to be at CES because it's the first time in 130 years that we have a launch of a consumer product on the ABB e-mobility brand. So thank you to be here. And this is the birth of a new baby. It's called the Terra Home. Excellent. We do the installation for you and then we start learning oh, about no, your behavior. That's a, that's a key element. You do the installation. Now, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the other boxes that are out there you get a you get a cardboard box and they say here here's your stuff. Exactly. You do it. Find your own electrician. Exactly. If and you this is where we we've done a study yeah. on these types of chargers and many 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 of the uh, uh, electricians that have been installing these things have been doing it totally wrong. And uh, we 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 did a, a YouTube analysis on these things. Burned up boxes, a junction box completely gone. Uh, wow. A, a 200 amp service completely burned up. These things, uh, these things require uh, some brains, exactly. and that's why, that's a key. That's a very key element there. That's, that, I, that's why we are very complementary with the automotive players, with the utilities, and together we can solve this, uh, yeah. this issue. Also with our ABB background, yeah, our uh, smart building uh, yeah, colleagues, yeah. and uh, for the breakers, etc., right. and also for the grid design, etc. 
So that is uh, everything about the basic, let's say, wall box uh, function. And then in the journey, we will want to take that customer in the journey of this electrification of their home. So once we see the behavior of their charging, then we might see uh, behavior that they charge during the day. And then we can ask, wow, why don't you consider uh, solar panels? Yeah. If you have them, great. Let's upgrade our energy management uh, software on, on it uh, and we can upgrade it. Or we can find a partner to bring and install uh, solar panels on your roof. If we see charging at night, it's a pity because you have solar, but you don't charge your car with it. You still yeah. use it from the grid. So why should you, cons should you consider a battery pack? So we're building an ecosystem of partners uh, per country where we take that customer from that utility or from that OEM through that journey. And slowly we're upgrading our software with the right energy management components that's needed for that solution. Yeah, so they don't have to think how to integrate my solar or how to integrate my heat pump. Yeah, that is a problem for us, yeah, for ABB to solve. Well, that's a problem that uh, many, many people would like to have solved for them. Yeah. And so I'm a, I'm a big fan already. Uh, I would like to, mm, Maybe ask one question: uh, When you uh, when you go in and uh, and you're doing you know the suggestions and want to, do you are are you using like uh, are you using maybe the let's let's just everybody's been talking about the uh, Ford Lightning. Would you uh, would you then uh, go and uh, and work with Ford because I know they have their own chargers, but oh. any charger kind of for a home should should be able to work. Yeah. So would he, you talk to the OEM to get to the, the basic knowledge from them, Absolutely. then talk to the consumer, the guy who's going to be buying these things, and then from there you, you kind of like come up with a plan for these people then? Absolutely. That's what I'm hearing? Because particularly uh, on the V2G, uh, you're yeah. referring to the Ford solution. Yeah. It's a very complex issue. You have the grid codes, you have to be certified by uh, the utility company. So yeah, yeah. we have to work with the utility, we have to work with the OEM, and yeah. we have to work uh, with the consumer uh, which solution he needs. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, it, it becomes quite complex if you want to deliver back yeah. to the grid. Particularly here uh, of, uh, in, in the U.S., particularly in California, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you have this uh, peak shaving, as we call it. Uh, we don't want to blow the fuse. Yeah, yeah. But particularly for this uh, backup, people we really need a V2G uh, um, bidirectional solution. Right, yeah. So all the charges that we launch are bidirectional by default. Yeah, so I, I'm very interested in this, yeah. but I'm also interested in the... Huh? Um, in the, uh, the uh, if you want to call it public charging, mm -hmm. we had some seriously nasty weather um, in the north part of the United States yeah. and definitely Canada. Yeah. And we found uh, there's a very <laughs> now famous uh, video mm -hmm. that uh, Kyle from uh, Out of Spec uh, put up. And he, he criticized every charger, especially yeah. the ones that... Um, uh, I can't remember the, the names of the company. It doesn't matter. I shouldn't do that anyways. But he had nothing but praise for ABB. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning it. Yeah, exactly. that, that, I'm telling you, yeah. that's one of the reasons we're here. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that, uh, that first off, thank you, Kyle. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, this, this makes a huge difference yeah. because my wife absolutely hates most of the chargers that are out there in the public yeah. arena. She weighs 100 pounds. She's like uh, this tall and about that big in diameter. So she doesn't like the fact that there's heavy cables and all exactly. this other stuff, yeah. but she will go, she'll look to see if she's driving the Rivian. We have a, we have a Tesla three and a Rivian. Yeah. And uh, if she's driving the Rivian, she's gonna go and check out wow. which one of the uh, different uh, charging stations there is. She'll go to ABB based on Kyle oh, because wow. She went to the other ones and they were all dead. Oh. The only things that were alive was your ABB chargers and Tesla chargers. Nobody else was, was okay. working, nobody. But don't give me the credits. I think I have to call uh, in uh, Bob, because Bob, Oh yeah. it's your team, the US team. Okay, so now you're seeing us sitting down and that's because the old man is falling apart. <laughs> I've been standing up straight for uh, since uh, seven this morning. Anyhow. Bob, I would re you're the guy that uh, you're the guy that makes uh, uh, made uh, Kyle's day. He, if if it wouldn't have been for the ABB charger, um, he wouldn't have got home that night. Oh, that's that site in Colorado. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, well, we're happy to work for him. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm, I think that uh, it's not just in Colorado because, like I said, my wife now looks for uh, whose charger is who. I mean, you've you've, you've sold them to different uh, different uh, entities and whatnot, but you can tell which one is ABB. So she'll go to the ABB chargers and then and then she'll try and plug it in because the others lie. It says it's working, but really it isn't working, and yours do work. So I'm, I'm very interested in a, a little background story on that. Well, Why I, is it that yours I works mean, and the other guys don't? Well, I mean, part of it is it's our serv it's our approach to service and kind of the architecture. So we make sure that all our DC fast chargers we have the ability to connect from a, from a remote service standpoint, mm. so we can diagnose uh, what the issues are remotely, and typically we can solve most of the issues sixty to seventy percent remotely. Uh, without a field dispatch yeah. so that's kind of the key to scaling that sort of thing because mm -hmm. if you can imagine if you're going to put thousands of these things around the country you can't just yeah. send people willy-nilly to go fix something so the thing is though as soon as it seems to hit somewhere about oh 20 degrees or something like that uh was it minus 20 degrees i should say all of a sudden everybody else's systems die what's yours rated for i thought they were I thought they'd be like a car. A car, if I design a car, it has to work at minus 40. What are chargers, uh, what are they supposed to be working So at? my understanding, and I am an engineer, but I'm not the design engineer, the limitation is uh, really on the, on, so it depends if you talk about cool cables or non-cool cables, yeah. but it's really about uh, the thermal limitations on the cables. So the power electronics are fine because you can always put in a space heater if it's needed for the climate. Of course, you can also put cooling in if it's hot, but it's really how pliable are the cables, what fluid is in the same liquid cooled unit? Is it what's its freezing temperature? And well, what do you know? What the uh, what the rating is? I because think, I, think minus, I think minus thirty was the rating that minus comes 30? off the top of my head. There, I'd have to double check. But yeah, our guys they come in if there's uh, I think we have eight or ten of them, and you you plug in and then when you're done or when your little beeper goes off, you pull it out and let somebody else in. Um, I think that you're going to see a lot more of that type of situation. But what I'd really like to have is not just the little wall boxes, but you know maybe something that's a little more commercial, uh, something running, uh, running, uh, so we could get fast charging at work. Where yeah, so, do you think so you are right with that? So right in the destination space, we're looking at a couple different things as the market evolves, and, and, and Leon's in the middle of that vertical market segment where what we call destination charging is where people are going to spend a lot of time, whether yeah. whether it's an hour or five hours or eight hours at work what's the use case, right? So you may have a site like your office where some people are there for eight hours, they only need a level two charger. Yeah. You may have a visitor coming for a meeting, he needs to charge in an hour and he's gone. So yeah. that's a different level of charge. So we, we make everything from uh, from a 7KW AC charger to a 24KW DC fast charger, all the way up through, of course, 360KW. So I haven't seen anybody uh, putting those kinds of chargers up at any of the buildings around, because we, we, we do have a quite a few folks that are, um, you know, doing the same thing as Monroe. They have uh, they have, like a kiosk or you pull up next to the building and, and charge up. Um, how, how do we, how does somebody get a hold of uh, uh, DC fast charging or how much well, would it cost? We have various channel partners that are some are vertical. They, they'll do, they'll sell it and install it and they'll even service it. Um, yeah. And then of course we have other just wholesaler partners where you can go buy one and of course your electrician can install it. And of course we, we support the commissioning on the back end. But uh, the 20 KW DC wall boxes as we call them, they've really been flying off the shelf going to dealerships as they prepare to, yeah. to scale because they may not have a great infrastructure big enough to support a large, but they still need to charge a vehicle either yeah. in, the, in the shop or in front of house, right? And yeah. they want to support customers as they come in. So it's kind of the starting point for people who aren't, don't have a connection to take oh, on a big charge. So we were uh, taught, we've talked about uh, home charging uh, and then we've talked about, uh, you know, fast charging for the public. Yep. And now what I'd like to do is have you uh, give us a little bit of an introduction and what's going on with the big trucks and stuff like that. Um, high voltage, fast charging. Yeah, sure. So uh, to start off, you know, I think that the truck and transit uh, segment is really uh, impactful. Uh, even though it only represents about 2% of the vehicles on the road today, it represents between 25 and 30% of the pollution that's generated right. by all the trucks and cars on the road. Right. 
So every vehicle that we convert is that much more valuable uh, for the planet. And um, you know, one, one of the things that we've really been waiting on in the uh, truck and transit world is the vehicles. Right. And now they are really starting to come around, right? So we've seen yeah. OEM after OEM, not just make announcements, but actual deliveries. Right. Uh, and so the, the amount of attention and interest from the fleet segment is picking up tremendously. And it's a very different segment. And the needs from a consumer perspective are light years away from what fleet and transit need. Mm. Um, and so we are just like you see here with the home um, features, yeah. the customer experience, right? So encompassing hardware and software uh, is at the heart of creating a solution that fits into the fleet space. <clears throat> so we talk about the fleet space now, currently like, okay, so for, for a while I was driving truck and, um, and I know that, uh, you know, um, I was driving truck in Canada. So Husky stations are really popular. So you drive in and you, uh, you can uh, gas up, fuel up because mostly it's not gas, it's diesel. And, uh, or you can just drop the truck off. Somebody else will take care of it. But what do we, what are you doing then with, um, with, uh, with big trucks, are you going to put them in those types of stations or how, uh, how, how are you making that work out? What, what kind of... So that's one of the similarities that we see between uh, personal vehicles and uh, trucks. Most of the charging is gonna be done at the home base. There are obviously tons of truck, uh, trucks and tractors that go over the road that need um, chargers at yeah. the uh, truck stops as well. Um, and it's going to be an evolution. So the vehicles uh, will begin uh, also in return to base type operations where it's very yeah. easy to electrify the customer's facility. Uh, and then eventually we'll evolve just like we did with from home charging to destination charging um, where truck stops of all brands will, will start to electrify their facilities. And those are actually usually along highways where there's you know, yeah. access to plenty of power as well. Thank you all for, uh, for giving me this wonderful experience at ABB. Thank you all for watching uh, Monroe Live and stay tuned for more coming from uh, the Consumer Electronics Show down here in Las Vegas. Thank you.